When I was a boy in 1950, North Carolina had barely 4 million people, and today we're approaching 10 million, and we're one of the fastest growing states in the nation. A few decades ago, most of us lived on farms and in small towns. And today, most of us live in urban areas, in apartments, condominiums, and in suburban neighborhoods. No matter where you live in North Carolina, you are the owner of large tracts of land comprising a very large estate. Now, you and I own this land together, and I'm talking about our state parks and natural areas, which cover over 200,000 acres from the mountains to the coast. On exploring North Carolina, we have been privileged to visit each of our state parks and natural areas over the years. I know many of them quite well, and today it is my privilege to show you the lands which we own together. They are our state parks. The lands comprising our estate stretch from the Atlantic Ocean to the 6,000 foot peaks in our western mountains. The estate you and I own together has all the features of the greatest states of Europe and the largest estate in North Carolina the magnificent Biltmore Estate in Asheville. Across our lands, we have places for hiking, biking, and canoeing. Our estate also has magnificent gardens with flowers from early spring to late fall. The extraordinary wildflowers on our land include the magnificent and exceedingly rare Gray's Lily, found on only a few high peaks. The Oconee Bell is another rare flower found in the wild in only a handful of mountain coves. On our estate lands, you'll see foam flower the diminutive crested iris, flame azalea, pinkster bloom azalea, and cardinal flower. In the spring, look under the leaves for the flowers of wild ginger. In some of our easternmost estate lands, you'll find the magnificent pine lily. And if you are lucky, you'll see the delicate spider lily along creek banks and ditches. And let's not forget the white wildflower found within a 90 mile radius of Wilmington, called by Charles Darwin the most wonderful plant in the world, the Venus flytrap. Our estate parks are filled with birds. Animals. and insects for you and your children to enjoy. There are the usual suspects, hummingbirds, turkey, secretive owls, and birds with colors that defy the imagination such as the gaudy painted bunting. Like all great estates, our estate is stocked with artwork, sculpture, and landscapes. Few museums can touch our collection. 
finally, we have music, including magnificent voices singing in the forest. And the sound of water. Like all owners of the greatest estates in the world, we don't have time or the expertise to manage our lands without a staff. Fortunately, the women and men who manage North Carolina state parks are also members of the North Carolina family and co-owners of this estate. They are the rangers of the North Carolina state park system. To help exploring North Carolina, share with you these crown jewel lands. I ask three of its finest to tell us about their work on our estate. I want you to meet a longtime friend and the director of the North Carolina State Park System, Lewis Ledford, who has held virtually every job in the system during his more than 35 years of service. No one knows more about the state parks of North Carolina and perhaps the nation than Lewis Ledford. We also had the opportunity to visit with Sue McBean, superintendent of the rugged and magnificent Grandfather Mountain State Park. And finally, we'll meet with Matt Winslow, superintendent of one of the most recognizable pieces of real estate in North Carolina, Pilot Mountain State Park. I ask Lewis to describe the scope and content of the North Carolina State Park System, our estate. North Carolina is a magnificent state, truly blessed with unique natural resources. Our state park system now has over 70 units, over 40 of them developed as state parks, and those also, units also range as state natural areas, state rivers, state trails, such as the Mountains of Sea Trail, that uh, crosses North Carolina in what I've been calling a thousand mile partnership. Our state park system ranges from the diversity of a gorgeous state park, a tropical rainforest, if you will, in western North Carolina, to Onslow County and a barrier island in Hammocks Beach State Park where sea turtles are nesting, to the tallest sand dune on the eastern seaboard, the highest mountain in eastern America at Mount Mitchell. You know, if I went on and on, I'd be bragging. Sue McBean, help to differentiate between the role of state parks and other public lands, including state and national forest, and wildlife refuges. The management of North Carolina state parks would differ from other federally managed lands or even other land management agencies within North Carolina. Um, we all manage to what our mission statement says, and the mission of North Carolina State Parks is that we're here to protect and conserve uh, areas of statewide significance within North Carolina. We're here to provide recreational opportunities for the citizens of the state and for our visitors, environmental education opportunities, and to encourage stewardship amongst our citizens of the state. Perhaps the most important feature of our state is that virtually every parcel is distinct and different. Sue McBean explained how. There are about 40 state parks in North Carolina and each one is different and unique but together they make up a fabulous state park system. If you look at the names of the state parks, uh, Grandfather Mountain, um, Haw River, 
Eno River, Jordan Lake, Merchant's Mill Pond, Dismal Swamp, Carolina Beach, that you don't even have to know where those parks are, you don't have to know anything about them, but just knowing the names gives you an idea about something different and something valuable in each state park. And if you look at the whole system together, you know that in North Carolina, we have all those different environments, all those different ecosystems, and each one of those brings forth um, a value of cultural history, the dynamics of the region, the um, geology, the topography, the climate, um, it all pulls it together and our state park system represents very well the diversity of the state of North Carolina. Lewis Ledford also added his two cents as to how our lands fill important needs and capture the diversity of North Carolina. Each of our state parks have different characteristics or personalities, if you will. To visit one state park, to maybe go to Jordan Lake and experience the recreational opportunities of one of the largest lakes in the state is incredibly different from the vastness of the Great Dismal Swamp. Or the northernmost range of the palm tree in southeast North Carolina, or the boreal forest like Canada in western North Carolina. What a diversity, or being atop uh, in the fall, in October, at Pilot Mountain, when the hawk migrations occur, what a destination we have in terms of unique resources and special characteristics that each of the parks enjoy. This park system did not magically appear. It took the vision and passion of men, women, and organizations over the years to identify and acquire the tracks which now make up our estate. A lot of our state parks have come into being when there was some charismatic natural feature that local people wanted to protect. Um, you know, in the case of Pilot Mountain, it was the obvious, the mountain itself was a local landmark, but the Yakin River as well, the portion of the Yakin River that flows through the park is really scenic, and there was a lot of, uh, a lot of local affection for it, and that was made part of the state park. You, you look across the state and you see all of our parks and you see someone that has, has felt like it was something that needed to be saved for future generations. And, and a lot of them thinking with a lot of foresight because at the time maybe it didn't seem like it was threatened. But you know, if we can look 10, 20, 30, or 40 years down the road, a lot of our places that we're, we need to make parks now, 50 years from now, um, they might be as endangered as, as some of the things that we tried to protect 50 years ago. This type of planning is often referred to as cathedral thinking. The idea of building something that may not be completed for several generations. The state park system was established when roads were bad, when much of our land was cut over, and when there were few visitors. Thank goodness some people saw the potential of a growing system that would serve the needs of North Carolinians for generations to come. America's first national park, Yellowstone, was established in 1872. In 1916, North Carolina's first state park became a reality at Mount Mitchell. The author, Wallace Stegner, has written that parks were America's best idea. Sue McBean would agree. North Carolina state parks are about 100 years old, and that's a fairly mature state park system. And a mature state park system, it seems to me, is a, is a system that can both spread its wings and also stay grounded and true and steadfast to its mission. So if you look at North Carolina state parks, we begin with Mount Mitchell, and if you go to Mount Mitchell, it's it upholds a feeling of history. It's an ancient mountain. It's an old mature forest. Um, the, the stories and the history and the culture are more like legends in the area and they feel very, very old and very well established. Whereas on the other hand, the North Carolina State Parks has the confidence to um, grasp on to, to new um, develop new traditions. Uh, Haw River State Park is an excellent example of that. Um, with that new state park, 
We have an environmental education program that is like no other in the entire state park system, a residential environmental education program where we have students come and stay and they're, they're in the environment for several days at a time. They learn, they um, establish friendships and, and develop an appreciation for being outside and they're immersed in it. Since 1916, we have built a park system that is within close proximity of almost every Tar Heel. And visitorship has never been higher. An overwhelming majority of the citizens of North Carolina live within an hour of a state park. Our state park system is at record levels of visitation. More than 14 million citizens have visited a state park in each of the last three years. Our park system is not just a benefit to wildlife and lovers of the natural world. It is also very important to job creation and to our quality of life. Companies and people relocate to North Carolina for many factors. Roads, education, their school systems, their parks, the environmental quality. I've heard it said that Parks are a tonic for the mind, for the body, for the spirit. Even with increased visitorship, it is still possible to find your own special places to reflect and to develop your own routines. I have certain parts of the park, that uh, certain scenes that will never get old that I like to see every day. We have certain visitors that like to hike the same trail every day or the same, uh, you know, do the same rock climbing route on a regular basis. And, uh, and that just becomes a part of their routine. And you know, we have so many things that become routine. If you have to have a fixed routine or something that you do on a regular basis, you know, why not make it something in a state park? While filming Exploring North Carolina, in each park I have found special places, sacred places, for thinking, exercise, birding, fishing, and biking. I'm in the middle of Umstead State Park. It's the closest to my home. And like virtually all other state parks, it is different in each season. Four parks in one. No matter what your interest and the season, you can develop it on this great estate that we own together. One of my personal passions is photography. And throughout the year, I take a camera in our state parks to photograph the best of nature. Within our state parks, there is not only great natural diversity, there is also social history to be learned. Look closely and you will see piles of rock 
where chimneys once stood. Centuries-old cemeteries tucked away in the trees, the walls of ancient mills, and forgotten efforts to control the flood of great rivers. At Raven Rock State Park, you'll see a great stone overhang where American Indians and later the first settlers took shelter overlooking the Cape Fear River. We have a staff on our estate, women and men who are not just law enforcement officers, emergency medical technicians, naturalists, teachers, and stewards. They are also owners of this great estate with you and me. Since we share ownership, it is therefore important to understand each of us has responsibilities. Well, we all own these parks as citizens of North Carolina, but as a owner, you know, and as an employee of the park system, something simple that, you know, that I've tried to do, look at in parks as I, you know, throughout my career is to try to leave it a little bit better than I found it. And that's kind of the same message we try to get through to visitors with school kids on programs and things. It's that these parks are free, these parks are yours. They're here to enjoy, but you need to try and leave it a little bit better than you found it. It's something simple, but it's something that everybody can do. The state parks are yours. They're everyone's. And it's everyone's responsibility to take care of the state park, to be respectful of the state park, to pick up after yourself, don't litter, um, be respectful of wildlife, plants, you no know, graffiti, you know, don't, don't pick flowers and don't take things home, but to be respectful of what's in the state park and to help us protect it and conserve it so that it's there for your children and their children and 200 years from now. We're all owners of the North Carolina State Park System. We're always looking for more volunteers, for more people to come in and help us achieve this mission of conservation. I think that the natural environment, I think that state parks and other green places help people to stay grounded. I think it, it helps us find that calm place in our lives. If you look at Umstead State Park, it's really a, a green island um, between an airport and a city and highways and, and it's kind of like a sanctuary in the middle providing all the people that live around there an opportunity to get out and breathe fresh air and, and experience the natural environment and maybe slow down and take a walk or, or just speed up and take a run and, and release the adrenalines and the stress of the day. They just provide you with the opportunity to, to be in the natural world. We don't know what North Carolina will look like in 100 years. So if we're not picking places that are really important to us and just holding them out, just places that we can look at and, and you know, 100 years from now, we don't know what else is gonna go on, but those are gonna be state parks. You remember that Lewis Ledford told us that North Carolina has over 14 million visitors in its state park system and that our population is close to 10 million people. Well, I visit state parks over 150 times per year and I see many of the same people over and over again. So that means that some of you are not visiting the park near you. Take pride that you and I own some of the most beautiful lands on this planet while exploring North Carolina. For additional information about this or other episodes, go to these websites. Exploring North Carolina is made possible by major financial support from DTS Software, Mainframe Storage Management Solutions,
This permanent digital record of North Carolina's natural heritage will be used in schools and the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences for generations to come because of the generous financial support of the members of State Employees Credit Union. Exploring North Carolina is produced in partnership with the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences, the largest natural sciences museum in the Southeast. Let it be your field guide to the treasures of North Carolina and beyond. And by UNC-TV viewers like you.